there's been an awful lot of misinformation about what happened to the submersible that collapsed near the Titanic. The reality is much more severe than you probably imagine, and it actually has to do with scuba diving itself. Let's take a look. Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. I am coming to you from Belize where I have been doing scuba diving the last several days. So it seems a little appropriate that I would talk about what happened to the submersible that went down to the Titanic. Everyone is very interested in talking about implosions and what could have possibly happened and whether the poor tragic people that were you know, caught in the accident, again, the likelihood is that they were caught in the accident. Nobody knows for absolutely sure at this point. And of course it was a tragedy, so I'm not making light of any of that. But I think that there is a lot of misinformation about what actually took place and so it's probably valuable to try to explain what all this has to do and it basically all has to do with pressure and there is actually pressure around me right now and around you if you're close to sea level that would be one bar or 15 pounds per square inch so one bar just basically means one atmosphere of pressure but what does that mean that means that all of the atoms of oxygen between the ground, sea level, I'm at sea level right now, and all the way up to outer space, and think of it as like a column of air. That actually weighs quite a bit. There's a lot of pressure. The, the molecules of atmosphere here are put under pressure because of all the molecules of atmosphere that are above it. So you're at the bottom of a very, very deep well of gas, of nitrogen and oxygen primarily in the atmosphere, and that has a massive effect on you that allows you to do things like breathe and it allows you to do things like inhabit the world and you know actively do stuff if you have ever traveled to a place like a high mountain or something if you've ever you know gone to mount everest or even gone to mount everest base camp when you get up to higher altitude that pressure actually decreases and decreases and decreases and what happens is that even though the percentage of oxygen is still around 21 percent oxygen there's just less molecules of oxygen around you. So pressure is just the amount of, of molecules of nitrogen and oxygen and CO2 and xenon and whatever else. But that's the stuff that's impacting you at every moment. But because it's balanced by what's inside of you, of course, you open your mouth and you breathe, you create a slightly smaller pressure in your lungs and they expand to take in air. And some of the molecules of of atmosphere that are around impact the little you know places in your lungs the alveoli I think is the right word for it but anyway it impacts that it gets absorbed by that it goes into your bloodstream you breathe out carbon dioxide comes out same thing happens in reverse with plants so that's the basic thing that's going on but the really important thing to know about is that we are under pressure so if you went into space in like a, a spacecraft or something and somebody opened the door that would be a bad day for you. What would happen is that you would actually essentially explode. Now you wouldn't go like that because your skin and your organs are pretty tough. So they would actually resist that. But what would happen is that your blood, your everything in your mouth would start to boil. Your blood would boil. Everything would exhaust from you. You couldn't hold your breath. If you tried to, it would just escape right out of there and it would disappear and you would be like you had had your you know all of your breath out of you but you couldn't take another breath inside you'd be worried about a lot of other things too because it would either be very very hot or very cold depending on where you were and you would die you know it, you'd become unconscious I think in somewhere around 20 or 30 seconds and then you would perish very rapidly after that so so you wouldn't explode in outer space, but you would die quickly because all of the air, everything that's inside of you would be exhausted. And so it would just, you know, go out into outer space instead. And remember, this is one bar of atmosphere or 15 pounds per square inch. Now, where the Titanic finally came to rest after crashing into the iceberg is around 12 and a half thousand feet or around 3,800 meters of depth. And as I'm sure most of you know, water has a lot more viscosity. It's a lot more dense than air. So as it turns out, every 10 meters or 33 feet approximately of depth that you go down in water is equal to one atmosphere or one bar of pressure or another 15 pounds per square inch. So at 3,800 meters, you're looking at about 380 bar or around 57,000 PSI or pounds per square inch. So remember, you know, you go in 
into space and you basically kind of explode and you would die very, very rapidly from loss of air and you couldn't hold your breath and bad, bad things would happen. That's at 15 PSI or one bar. We're talking about 57,000 PSI in the opposite direction. So now instead of it being released from you because you're under pressure at very great pressure, what you're doing is you're crushing something instead. And again, if negative 15 pounds per square inch will kill you very rapidly because you can't breathe or any of that kind of stuff, just think of how quickly 57,000 PSI is going to crush you. So essentially what's going on is a submarine is a shell of one atmosphere pressure. So it's made very, very tough. It's usually in kind of a, you know, a cylinder looking thing like a submarine generally is. And the reason why is because you don't want any kind of squared off points because pressure can build. So you don't want anything like an angle or something. So everything Thing is very smooth on the outside. It's got a lot of structure. Obviously something going down that deep is very, very structurally rigid because you've only got one bar of atmosphere or 15 pounds per square inch inside and everything, all of the water, the huge column of water that's sitting on top of that, that density is all trying to push that in and make it collapse. And unfortunately what it sounds like is that in this situation, the submersible some, there was some weak point in the structure of this vehicle and that weak point gave. And when that weak point gave, it would have crushed these people before they even, before the nerves, you know, before the nerves in your finger could even reach your brain, the amount of time it would take, they would have been crushed. And as an example of this, I'm going to show you this really interesting video. And of course, I will leave a link to this in the description so you can watch the whole thing, but I'll just show a little part of it. This is 15, PSI or one bar crushing this giant steel can. So there is a lot of pressure just from the atmosphere outside. So effectively what they did was they boiled the air inside. So they made it much, much lower density Then they sealed it. And then they put ice on top of this thing. And after a few seconds when it got cold and essentially the inside of this giant canister was more or less a vacuum so that you had 15 pounds per square inch or one bar outside of that and more or less nothing inside. It is crushed very, very rapidly and it happens really quickly. And again, we're talking about one bar, not 380 bar or 57,000 PSI. So we're talking about massive, massive more pressure on the structure of the submarine. And likely again, when it gave, it gave almost instantly. And what would have happened in slow motion would have been as this began to collapse, of course, the air pressure would rapidly go from one bar up to the ambient pressure of the, the ocean around it or somewhere around 380 bar. And so the person's, everyone's lungs, everything inside of them would have crushed down. Your lungs would become smaller than a pea. It'd be like maybe a peppercorn, maybe smaller than that. It would actually just like that, completely collapse. Your entire body would go that way. Water is relatively incompressible, so you're, the, the water inside of your body wouldn't compress that much, but all of the air cavities and everything inside of you, in, in, you know, in your cranium, in your ears, everything would crush incredibly rapidly down to an almost microscopically small point. And then, of course, the steel from the outside of the vehicle would crush you on top of that. So in the end of it, Unfortunately, what would be there would be the debris of the wreckage and then within that would be some maybe kind of <laughs> red smudge, something like that. There would be some, you know, some smudgery and, and of course when it crushed it would probably rebound and all sorts of things would happen. So if you think that any of these people would ever be found or any evidence of them would ever be found, no, there's no chance of that. And what an interesting thing is my wife actually mentioned it would be a great way if you could somehow get yourself off the submersible and then have it crushed, it would be a great way to fake your death because there would be no remains at all identifiable at that point. It would just be completely smashed. So interesting, you know, <laughs> we're not going to go conspiracy theory. I'm pretty sure that they just all perished and rather tragically. So I wanted to bring up one other interesting aspect of this, which, like I said, I'm scuba diving here. And why do people wear those big cylinders on their back when they're scuba diving, well, it actually has to do with pressure also. So if you think about what you're doing when you're breathing, of course, like I said, there's 15 PSI around you. And as you expand your diaphragm and expand your lungs, that actually becomes less than that temporarily. So 
maybe a couple of pounds per square inch or you know a, a bit of a bar or something like that lower pressure and that draws air into your mouth as you're breathing and then when you breathe out again of course you you overpressure that and you force the air out so that's the way that works that works great unless you're underwater which has a lot more pressure than the atmosphere and of course you have to breathe the atmosphere i don't know if anybody you know was ever silly like i was when i was a kid but we would try to get like really long snorkels so you could do, go down six or eight feet in the pool and you would uh, try to breathe through the snorkel. Bad idea, by the way. Don't do that because carbon dioxide gets into the airways. So if you do this for a period of time, you will pass out. And if you're under the water, that is a bad idea. So please don't do this at home. But if you've ever tried it, you can't actually breathe in after being down a couple of feet under the water. So even if you had a really long snorkel and it somehow worked, you would try to breathe in and your, your diaphragm and your lungs could not expand because there is so much pressure from the water, just a couple of feet under the water. So the only way that you can go down and breathe, of course, what you can do is hold your breath and swim down and free divers do that all the time but but what happens is when you do that if you if you even snorkeling if you you know breathe 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 and then you dive underwater and hold your breath your lungs will compress like this as you go down towards however far down you're going you'll also notice that your inner ears are going to hurt like crazy your middle ears sorry are going to hurt like crazy because the air pressure inside of them is smaller than the water pressure which is why you have to do this thing and pop your ears out. Also, the same thing happens when you're in an airplane and you're up at altitude and you come down because the pressure increases, hurts your ears. So all of that stuff, all of the air cavities in your body will compress smaller as you dive down, even if you're holding your breath. And so even if you had access to a big hose and you could try to breathe, you would not be able to because your lungs simply wouldn't be strong enough to breathe against that effect. So how do you compensate for that? Well, with a scuba tank, a scuba tank has things under, a, it's about 200 bar of pressure inside there, or 3,000 PSI. So you've got, you've got all of this pressurized air inside the tank, and then there's a thing called a regulator that takes that and it reduces the pressure down to the ambient pressure around you. So as you're going down, you go down just a couple of feet or a meter or something like that, it's a little bit more pressure, and what happens is it delivers a little more pressure. It's very clever how it works, you know, it, it delivers just enough pressure so it's not like you're you know <laughs> gonna explode when you breathe in you won't breathe in too much but as you go down and the pressure increases effectively you get more and more air so what, what happens is if you're scuba diving and you're scuba diving very very close to the surface you can stay underwater for a long time because that bottle of pressurized air is feeding you just a little bit of air at every breath but when you get down to like 20 meters, 60, 70 feet, something like that, you are breathing a lot more air every single time because it has to deliver that much, right? So at 20 meters, you're at about uh, two extra bar of pressure, which means it's having to deliver two times the atmospheric pressure and volume to fill your lungs up and make you be able to breathe. And so as you're breathing in and out, you're actually taking in a ton of air, which means that the lower you go, the less time you can stay there because the air is fed to you at a much higher, it's just having to feed you more compressed air in order to balance the pressure around you. So the interesting aspect of that is that if you don't do this either, please don't, and definitely don't scuba dive without taking the courses because they teach you about this stuff. But if you were down at something like 10 or 20 meters and you took big breath in, hold your breath and then swim for the surface, eventually your lungs will explode. They, will, they won't explode. They will become very, very highly damaged. Because again, your body is very, very tough. It won't allow it to actually, it won't like a balloon. But you will kill yourself because your lungs will actually just rupture essentially inside of you because the pressure is so high that as you go up, it will, you know, the, the pressure gets lower and lower until you reach the surface and you will actually kill yourself if you uh, attempt to swim up holding your breath. So you always are taught to breathe calmly, swim slowly up to the surface so that the pressure as you're breathing in and out equalizes continuously as you're going up. And even if you're in an emergency situation, you're supposed to like yell. So if you had to, under an emergency, swim upward, you should yell because as you're going up, more and more 
like air is going to be inside of you. Even if you think you would exhaust your air in just a matter of seconds, you would not do that because the air is so, they're so pressurized at lower, uh, lower depths that as you swim up and up and up, it's expanding and expanding and expanding. So even though you're expelling air out of your lungs, you still have more and more there until you reach the surface. So it's a pretty crazy sort of thing, but I thought it would be interesting to let people understand exactly why scuba tanks are necessary, and they're necessary for the exact reason that they, the, the, the submersible by the Titanic collapsed is that you have to equalize the pressure if you're going to scuba dive. In a submarine, in a submersible, they keep the pressure at atmospheric pressure, so it's at one bar still where you're in it, but that means that this has to be a very, very solid structure around you so that you're able to keep breathing at one atmosphere of pressure and it's not crushed by the surrounding pressure. So again, a very, very tragic experience or event that happened, and I'm, I'm sorry for the family. I, you know, it's, it's, it's very unfortunate that this happened, um, but there is an explanation for it. No, they didn't explode. No, they wouldn't have even felt it. The likelihood is that at, that, at those kinds of depths, whatever happened, happened so rapidly that again, like I said, the time that it would take the nerve to get, the, the signal to get from your finger or whatever to your brain, that they would have already been crushed. So it wouldn't, they probably never even had an inkling that anything was happening. Hopefully. <laughs> Again, if you're going to go, that's probably the way to go, just to do it instantly and not even know about it. So anyway, if, if I made any mistakes with this, I think I got all the math correct and the numbers correct. But if I didn't get them correct, definitely let me know in the comments. I am happy to make little bits of corrections and stuff. But the basic thing that I'm talking about here is actually accurate, of course, and that is that when you have a lot of pressure on the outside, you don't explode, you implode when there is a break in the rigid structure that's around you. And again, they likely did not know what happened because it likely happened so rapidly there's no chance that they had any indication of what was going to happen about that. So yeah, so there you go. And again, that's how it relates to scuba diving. If you're ever interested in scuba diving, it is an amazing sport, but you do have to be careful because it's extremely dangerous to breathe pressurized air if you don't know what you're doing. And I didn't even talk about things like the bends and stuff, which is basically that your body is like a soda bottle. So when you're breathing that, uh, that compressed air, it's actually like, you know, a bottle of, well, this is still water, but you know, if you had a soda bottle full and you go like that and it all comes into uh, bubbles, that will happen in your bloodstream from the pressurized air if you don't release it slowly and carefully. So all of that stuff is taught in scuba diving classes. It's a very, very safe sport and it's really amazing, but you do have to know what you're doing. And it all relates to what happened with the submersible as well. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video. I know it's not Tesla focus, but it seems like something that people really were interested in knowing. If you did enjoy the video, please do like it so other people can find it and consider subscribing for more of this kind of content. And of course, if you want to support the channel in any way, there's a bunch of information in the description that you can look at to help support the channel. And in the meantime, I will see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.